The Polar Bear Story. Once upon a time, in the faraway land of the North Pole, there lived three little friends. There was Peter Polar Bear, Sammy Seal, and Sydney Seagull. They used to meet every day and play together in the snow and on the ice. It was such good fun, and they used to make up games to amuse themselves. One morning, Peter Polar Bear decided to go exploring with Sammy Seal. They said goodbye to Mummy Polar Bear and set off in search of adventure. Here we go marching across the ice, across the ice, isn't it nice? Here we go marching across the ice to see what we can see. Oh, here we go marching across the ice, across the ice, isn't it nice? Here we go marching across the ice, as happy as can be. Oh, here we go marching across the ice, across the ice, isn't it nice? Here we go marching across the ice to see what we can see. Yes, here we go marching across the ice, across the ice, oh, isn't it nice? Here we go marching across the ice to see what we can see. They soon found something to watch. It was a little Eskimo boy. He was sitting fishing by a hole that he had cut through the thick ice. As they watched, he caught a shiny silver fish. He put the fish into his bag, then he picked up all his things and he set off for his home. The fisherman pulls the fishy out. The fishy out. The fishy out. The fisherman pulls the fishy out and puts it in his bag. The fisherman takes it home for tea, home for tea, home for tea. The fisherman takes it home for tea, as happy as can be. His house was made from big blocks of frozen snow called an igloo. He looked very happy and pleased with himself. An igloo is a house of snow. Where inside lives the Eskimo, a place where he can go and hide away from all the cold outside. Inside the igloo, safe and sound, so smooth and white and nice and round. It's quiet, peaceful, and so calm. He's safe. Inside, away from home. Peter and Sammy continued walking across the snow. A little further on, a strange noise came to them. They followed it and saw something quite new to them both. It was a big ship that had stopped among the floating ice. The sailors had got off and were walking about on the ice that surrounded the ship. There were boxes and cages on the ice. And a strong smell of fish was mixed with all the new smells that Peter and Sammy didn't know. Quite a long way from the ship stood a big shiny cage. It was from this cage that the strongest smell of fish came. Peter and Sammy thought how nice it would be to have a taste, because that's what they both liked best of all. They very carefully crept up to the door of the open cage. There, hanging in the end of the cage. Was a lovely fresh fish. Peter slowly crept into the cage, gripped the fish tightly in his little jaws, and pulled like crazy. Sammy was right behind him, trying to help. Clang went the door as it fell shut, and they were trapped. All thoughts of fish were forgotten, and they tried hard to escape from the horrible place, but it was no use. In just a few minutes, the men arrived to see what all the fuss was about. The men were very pleased to find the two little animals in their trap. They would sell them to the circus for lots of money. That is what they were there to do—to catch animals for the circus. Now Sydney Seagull had gone to Peter's house to play, but Mrs. Polar Bear told him Peter and Sammy had already left, so Sydney flew off to find them. He arrived just as his two friends were being lifted aboard the ship with a crane. As Sydney flew around, he watched them being put onto the deck in their cages. As soon as all the men had left them alone, he flew down and asked if they were all right. They were very frightened, but they weren't hurt. 
Sidney said he'd better go and tell Peter's mummy and daddy what had happened, and off he flew. Soon the captain of the ship decided that it was time to go. They started up the engines, and off they sailed with the two little prisoners aboard. High above the ship, Sidney kept watch. From way up in the bright blue sky, he kept his sharp and beady eye on the ship far down below. He watched to see where they would go. Sidney Seagull, with your big bright eyes and your coat of white. Sidney Seagull, keeping watch both day and night. The yellow moon shone big and bright. He hoped his friends would be all right. They would be scared. He felt quite sure. He wished so hard he could do more. Sydney Seagull, with your big bright eyes and your coat of white. Sydney Seagull. Keeping watch both day and night Keeping watch both day and night Keeping watch both day and night After a long journey, the ship arrived at a busy port. Peter and Sammy's cage was lowered onto the dockside. It wasn't too long before the circus owner, a big, jolly, red-faced man, came to see the new arrivals. He was very pleased to find two nice young animals for him to train. They would be a big attraction, he felt sure, and they would bring in lots of people to the circus. He paid the captain, and they all set off for the circus straight away. As they all got nearer to the circus, they heard the circus music. There were people talking and shouting to each other. There was a huge, big, red and yellow tent. They were surprised at how many strange animals were there. They'd never seen anything like it before. They were just a little scared too. But people were kind and fed them lots of lovely fish and they talked to them too. That night, Peter was very homesick and sad to be so far from his mummy and daddy. He was thinking of them and missing them so much. I'm thinking of you so far away, so far across the sea. I'm wondering if you are sitting there thinking of me I'm thinking if I could stop the clock And go back somehow to what we've got I wouldn't make the same mistakes again As lonely as I am tonight so far away from home I think of you And now I know how it feels to be alone What have I done? What can I do to be with you again? Just hoping that someday I can, my friend I'm thinking of you so far away, so far across the sea, and wondering if you are sitting there thinking of me. Just sitting here wondering if you are thinking of me. 